Hey, this is Chris and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the 10 largest global managed funds available to Australian investors according to the amount of money they manage um, on the Morningstar website. Um, and I'm going to be talking through them in a countdown fashion from the lowest return over the last five years to the highest return over the last five years and also summarizing their strategies. Um, so at number 10, um, the worst performing of the largest 10 global fund managers over the last five years is the Antipodes Global Fund, um, P-Class. Now this fund has returned 6.04% per year um, over the last um, five years, that's to the end of March 2022. Um, if you'd invested $10,000 in this fund five years ago, you'd now have about $13,407. Um, now Antipodes, um, describes this fund as a fund that seeks to take advantage of the market's tendency for irrational extrapolation, identify investments that offer a high margin of safety, and build high conviction portfolios with a capital preservation focus. Um, that's a lot of buzzwords, even I have no idea really what they're talking about there, but clearly it's been a tough strategy for them over the last five years, and they've underperformed a lot of the other global investment strategies. Um, the next fund, um, in number nine, is the Packer & Co Investigator Fund. Um, now it's returned 6.14% per year over the last five years. Um, now it's a fund that uh, explains its strategy as being counter-cyclical um, and, and potentially this means that they might have had a bit bigger value focus which might be why they've struggled over the last five years. Um, if you'd invested $10,000 it would be about $13,470 um, now five years later. Um, that's the Packer & Co Investigator Fund at number nine. Number eight, um, now this is a well-known fund um, that's you know, certainly um, seen better days, which is the Platinum International Fund. Now over the last five years, this fund has returned 6.26% per annum. Um, it has a value, an Asian tilt, based on its underlying investments, and it's had a tough period of performance certainly over the last five years. Um, it comes in number eight um, and, and hasn't been one of the better performers over the last um, five years. Um, now coming in um, next is the Strategic International um, Equity Fund. It's returned a little bit more at 9.89% per year over the last um, five years. Um, $10,000 invested back then would be about $16,024, so a little bit better. Um, its focus as a fund is on small profitable companies um, and that's how it's done over the last five years. Um, the next fund is one that really needs no introduction. It's probably been the most talked about and well-known global fund in Australia over the last 10 years, which is the Magellan Global Fund, the open class of share. Um, now it's returned 10.6% per year over the last five years, um, which means that $10,000 would have turned into $16,550. Um, you know, where it's really struggled over the over the recent past has been through some of its technology exposures and particularly in some of the Chinese tech stocks that it had a large exposure to and is why this fund has unperformed the broader indices over the last five years. Um, the next fund um, is the Dimensional Global Core Equity Trust. Um, it's returned 10.85% per year over the last five years. Um, it tends to have a skew towards small caps and value. Um, you know, this is how Dimensional looks at the world. Um, you know, it's done a little bit better over the last few years, but still underperformed a lot of the global indices. Um, the next fund is the MFS Global Equity Trust. It's returned 11.37%. Um, it tends to focus on growth at a reasonable price. Um, after that is the Walter Scott Global Equity Fund at 3.44% per year. Um, it's a growth focused fund. So in the better performers over the last few years, we tend to see a few more of these growth funds that have had a higher exposure to growth companies. Although we've started to see the returns come back over the last few months. Um, coming in at number two then is the Arrow Street Global Equity Fund. It's had a return of 13.62% per year over the last five years. Um, so $10,000 invested back then would now yield you $18,935. Um, it describes itself as a style neutral, fully quantitative fund. Um, so it's basically got a model that decides what allocation it should invest into different stocks. And it's certainly done um, itself pretty well over the last five years. And finally, um, the best performing global 
equity fund of the largest 10 in Australia, at least over the last five years, has been the T. Rowe Price Global Equity Fund. It's returned 15.66% per year, um, which would mean that $10,000 invested back then would have cracked $20,000. You would have more than doubled your money at $20,697. Um, it's a global fund with a bit of a technology focus, which is why that it's done well. Um, interestingly though, um, that fund had also done better than the Global 100 ETF that we invest into up until the last few months when tech stocks have done very poorly. And actually the best performing of all of these um, over the last five years hasn't been any of these largest 10 active funds in Australia. The low cost broad market Global 100 ETF that we recommend to clients has returned 16.22% per year over the last five years, which means that $10,000 invested five years ago would now be $21,203. I think that's pretty phenomenal because all of these different active managers have different styles and approaches. We had some value managers, some growth managers, we had some small cap focus, some large cap focus, but out of the 10 biggest global fund managers in Australia that for retail money manage $41 billion, not a single one was able to outperform a low cost ETF over the last five years. It's certainly been our thesis and what we explain to clients that you wanna keep your costs low and stay diversified and not be tempted by some of these active fund managers and that's how it's played out over the, over the last five years. Now, what do we see going forward? Look, I would certainly expect that over the next five years, someone of these 10 fund managers going to outperform the market. It's just statistically very unlikely that they'll all continue to underperform. The tricky thing as an investor is that there's no way of knowing in advance which one of these 10 fund managers will outperform or underperform the market, which is why our advice to clients continues to be avoid these global active fund managers because it's a real gamble which one's going to do well or which one's going to do poorly. And the underperformance that you'll suffer if you pick one of the poor ones could be enormous and could take decades to recover. So keep it simple, keep diversified in the global large cap stocks if you're gonna invest globally is our advice to clients, um, which has served them well over the last five years and it's a strategy that we continue to recommend.